Good morning, Mixed Age. And good afternoon, Mixed Age. Miss Christina and I sure miss you guys, but I hope you enjoy a little bit of circle time fun as well as a story. I hope you guys are having a good morning so far. Can you give me two thumbs up if you're having a great day? Great. Well, again, we miss you, but let's get started. I have a challenge for you. Do you think we can count all the way to 24? I think so. Today is Monday, January 24th. Okay, let's see if we can count to 24. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. 23 and 24. All right, friends. Does anybody remember how to count backward from 24 all the way to one? Hmm, I think you can do it. Are you ready? 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, one, blast off! Very good job, guys. Give yourself a round of applause. Nice job. Okay, does anybody remember how many days there are in a week? Is it five? No. Seven, that's right. There are seven days in a week. Okay, let's sing our song. Ready? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. There are seven days, there are seven days, there are seven days in a week. There are seven days, there are seven days, there are seven days in a week. Okay, so I'm going to ask again, how many days are there in a week? That's right, seven. Okay, and for our bonus question, how many months are there in a year? Hmm. 10? No. What about 12? Are there 12 months in a year? <laughs> yes, that's right. Okay, help me start the beat. Ready? January, February, March, April, May, June, July, and August, September, October, November, December. 12 months in a year. One more time. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, and August, September, October, November, December, 12 months in a year. Okay, so I'm going to ask you again, how many months are there in a year? 12, that's right. Give yourself a round of applause. Very good. Okay, I have a question for you. Does anybody know what the weather's like today? Hmm, let's get out our hand binoculars and focus them. I have our classroom ones today. Let's see. Hmm. What's the weather? What's the weather? What's the weather like today? Is it sunny? Is it cloudy? Is it rainy out today? Hmm. What do you think? What's the weather today? Is it foggy? Is it snowy? No. Is it sunny? Yes, it's sunny today. The weather is sunny. And when you woke up this morning, was it hot or was it cold? I think it was cool. So the temperature is cool. And for bonus points, does anybody remember what season it is? It's winter, very good. The season is winter. Nice job, my friends. So I'm gonna bring out our alphabet bag to show you the letter of the week. Let's see, hmm, does, can anybody tell me what letter this is? This is the letter M, can you say M? M makes the mm sound. Okay, so let's see in the alphabet bag. Drum roll please, drum roll. D moose, does moose start with the letter M? It sure does, thumbs up. Let's see, hmm. Does frog start with the letter M? No, it sure doesn't. Let's see, 
What about, we all know it, these are masks. Do masks, does the word mask start with the letter M? It sure does. What about a marker? Does that start with the letter M? Thumbs up. And how about watermelon? Does watermelon start with the letter M? Nope, sure doesn't. What about our friend Marlon? Does his name start with the letter M? Yes, it sure does. And Maverick, does our friend Maverick start with the letter M? Yeah. What about Maya and Miles? Do their names start with the letter M? They sure do. What about monkey? Does monkey start with the letter M? It sure does. And last one in our M bag is a muffin. Muffin starts with the letter M. Can you look around your house and see anything that starts with the letter M? If so, you can show your mom or dad or brother or sister or anyone at your house of anything that starts with the letter M. Okay, and as I told you earlier, moose starts with the letter M, so I found a really silly story to hopefully make you laugh. It's called Moustache. Do you know what animal this is? It's a moose. Okay, let's listen. Moose had a problem, a horrible, hairy, prickly problem. It grew right below his nostrils and just above his upper lip. A moustache! Not, now, not a few spare hairs or shy little stubble. No mere weak, wandering whiskers on the upper lip of this moose. No siree! Moose had a big, bushy, bristly, mighty moustache but a moustache that was a blurry, shirley, mangly mess, and it itched a lot. Sure, he plucked and he tweezed, he even clipped, snipped, and teased, but his combs were still cowards, and his brushes rebelled. His scissors simply surrendered. Moose was in a frizzy tizzy. The moustache was completely crimping his style. He was a great hoofer, but he could barely bop and hip hop with a mustache, with a moustache going flip flop. He was a wonderful chef, but he simply could not flambe his souffle with all of those whiskers in his way. And he was a daring skier, but how could he downhill race with the mighty moustache blowing in his face? Moose had to do something and soon, but what? Do you guys have any ideas of what moustache could do with his mustache so it doesn't get in his way? Do you think he's gonna cut it? Hmm. Let's see. After days and days of much serious thought, Moose got an idea. He crossed some hair here, he crossed some hair there, and he tied his moustache around his neck. A moose scarf seemed to be the ideal answer to his problem. It was so simple, so easy, so perfectly perfect. <laughs> So silly. But then his moustache got knotted and mangled and horribly tangled, and those hundreds of hairs still prickled and tickled. Worse, Moose could barely take a breath with all that moustache wrapped around his neck. So Moose untied, unwrapped, unknotted, and ah, gulped in some fresh air. He got another idea. He parted some hair this way, he parted some hair that way, and he heaped all the moustache on top of his head. Moustache chewed, chewed antlers seemed to be the ideal answer to his problem. It was so simple, so easy, so perfectly perfect, until a squadron of squirrels and one very nosy gopher moved right into the moose motel. They huddled and hoarded, furrowed in, and burrowed out. Needless to say, it became quite crowded up there on Moose's head, and heavy and messy. Look at this giant mess up in Moose's hair. That's crazy. And very, very noisy. The squirrely, chitty and chatty squeals and squawks woke Moose every morning before the crack of dawn. And that gopher was giving the Moose one hairy headache. Moose needed his sleep. He needed his rest. He needed his privacy. Moose said to chew eat antlers nuts. 
said moose. So he unparted and unplied, untwisted and untwined, and said adios to the hairy horns. But now what? 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 The miserable moose took hold of a hunk of hair and he wrestled it, then roped it. He tethered, tied, tamed. Aha! A moose tail! Now that was so simple. That was so easy. That was not so perfectly perfect. Talk about a dizzy do. Moose didn't know if he was coming or going. Backward, forward, this way, that. He didn't know which end was which. Moose had to bail on the tail. And so he thought and thought and thought some more, but no other idea was a worthy winner. Braids were a bother. A moustache sweater? Too sweltering. Net? Not. Poor Moose, his problem was truly terrible, unbearable, just downright sad. He felt so alone, he didn't know what else to do. Then, call it fate, call it destiny. It was probably dumb luck. But one day, Moose tripped on his moustache and just had no time to duck. <laughs> pardon me, pardon me, they both said as they bumped. Then they blinked and they stared and their hearts went thump a thump. She was a moose with a bouffant so bodacious, outrageous. Well, it was just plain old big. Hair after hair piled high than high, higher than high, a skyscraping dew of glorious curls, a tower of swirling twists and twirls. She was simply splendid, stupendous, absolutely superb. Of course, Moose had to ask how she did what she did to get such a do. Miss Moose winked and then whispered, just a little glue. So she helped. So, she, so helped he fiercely plunge a hoof into a fat pot of the white gooey goop. And carefully, oh so carefully, they glopped and they plopped. They pasted and they pressured, pressed. They coaxed and curled every truly unruly wayward whisker. Around and around they tweaked and twirled those horrible hairs until Moose's once mangy, mangy mess was now a wondrous winding wave of marvelous moustache. Moose gazed in the mirror and smiled a broad moosey smile. He was so happy, so glad, just giddy with glee. He looked dashing and handsome. Moose gushed, is that really me? <laughs> with, one, with not a care for one hair, the moose pair boogied and bopped. They skied downhill and their cooking was hot, hot, hot. So of course it wasn't long after that moose and his moustache and his beautiful bride fox trotted and tangoed and waltzed down the aisle. Good hair days, bad hair days, they vowed to love and to cherish. And with hearts heaped with love and pots filled with goop, they both sighed, I do glue and promised never to part. It was so simple, so easy, so perfectly perfect, and it stuck. My friends, I hope you have a wonderful day, and Miss Christina and I will see you back tomorrow for another Circle Time. Have a great day and be awesome for your parents. Bye!